Two. Once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this worship service. I know many of you have traveled a long distance to participate in this worship service. Thank you for that. <coughs> and today we continue our meditation on various appearances of Jesus Christ after rising from the dead. <coughs> after Easter, I wanted to do a little uh, research because some of you, when gr I was greeting at the entrance, said, Happy Resurrection Day. Some said, Happy Easter. So I was a little confused what to say. I know this is not the first time I am hearing the greetings, Happy Resurrection Day. When I was in St. Um, Matthias's, I was greeted, Happy Resurrection Day. So as I looked, <coughs> there were a few pastors who were raising questions, creating doubts on the celebration of Good Friday and Easter. One pastor said, <coughs> We are not sure whether Jesus died on Good Friday. And he claimed, based on the verse of Jesus Christ, who said, I am giving you the sign of Jonah, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three, di three nights, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So that means three days and three nights, if Jesus died on Good Friday, now the calculation is not correct. He was not in the tomb for three days and three nights. So Jesus must have died on Wednesday or Thursday. So not on Good Friday. So stop celebrating Good Friday or observe Good Friday. <clears throat> that was his claim. Now, anyway, he takes that... Jesus rose on Sunday because the Bible is very clear that on the first day of the week the women and the disciples went and saw the empty tomb. <clears throat> so he pushes back the crucifixion before Friday. Now, now the problem is <clears throat> the three days and three nights is a Semitic uh, idiom. It means days and nights, three days. It counts, so the second thing that we have to bear in mind is that in the Jewish calendar, they calculate days in a different way. <clears throat> they start with evening six o'clock and ends the day on the next day evening six o'clock. Even now they follow it. Even if you go to uh, Holy Land, on Friday evening, 6 o'clock, they will start closing the shop. <clears throat> because the Sabbath starts on Friday evening, 6 o'clock. Now, another thing that we have to note is that when something happens in a particular time, that was taken as the day one, not zero. Okay? Day one. So, Friday is day one. The Saturday Day 2, the Saturday ends on Saturday evening 6 o'clock. So from evening 6 o'clock, the first day begins. Because it coincides with the creation story. God created everything evening and morning, day 1 or day 2. So Israelites continued that evening and morning as one day. So that comes to... Easter as the third day. That makes crucifixion on the day of Good Friday. So they are just creating some problem to confuse the Christendom, the Christian community. The second one, of course, with Easter, resurrection or day or Easter day. It's true. It's true that during the springtime, um, they celebrated a festival, a pagan celebrated festival called Easter um, because they taken 
the goddess's name estera or ostera or easter or so really a pagan god that's true and they celebrated uh, during the spring time and bunnies and eggs are connected to that pagan festival now we have to bear in mind <coughs> that it comes very close to the risen day of the lord and of course i would say the church had a tough time in changing the people transforming the people because in the first century itself when sorry in the third century when the first emperor became christian large number of people started taking baptism the whole village will take baptism so when large inflow was took place in in the church people had to change their life old pagan festivals have to be had to be abandoned now the church had to replace the festivals so when they had in the winter time the festival for sun god they changed it to christmas in the same way with regard to the easter they changed it to resurrection day basically because the passover is calculated based on the jewish calendar that's why every year the good friday and easter comes in different dates now the thing that we have to bear in mind is that <clears throat> forget about the name easter yes we don't have to use that word i think i have to ask prabhu also change it okay easter that comes from that pagan goddess's name that's true but the church wanted to celebrate good friday because on the day of good friday jesus died and gave the salvation to the whole world and of course on the third day he rose again and that was a great event that has to be celebrated all over this world so there is no problem with that <clears throat> now the problem comes when they attack using the word easter that's fine but if they attack good friday and easter and say we should not celebrate or we should not observe i take it as a wrong move it's an attack to the mainline church if you look at these pastors they are they are all independent uh, pastors and they wanted to create confusion now the thing is it's not the first time it's not taking place in the recent days even in way back in 16th century many people wanted to disprove resurrection for example <clears throat> in 1965 a british scholar named hughes joseph scofield he wrote a book the passover plot it's there in the internet and it was so effective and controversial they took a movie based on that book in 1976 the whole thing is the, the thesis is this resurrection and the whole life of jesus christ is all cooked cooked up stories jesus he says a scholarly person he knew the hebrew bible very well so he planned out everything even the miracles it's all just uh, imaginative it's all cooked up for example when he blessed the loaves and gave it to the people <clears throat> the bread and fish didn't multiply actually when jesus blessed the boys food and gave it to other people and everybody took their own food and shared it with everybody and 5000 people were fed see so he changed everything and even he he went to the extent of saying jesus masterminded the whole thing riding on a donkey just to fulfill what is said in zechariah 
and then he also came up with a very strong statement that he had a plan the passover plot with his disciple telling them see i will be crucified but give me some medicine so that i will become unconscious and they will think that i had died just bring me down and keep me in a tomb and then i will come alive again and appear to you then he says the whole thing went wrong <clears throat> yes they gave something that uh, vinegar or the sour wine and jesus became unconscious but the ve- thing went wrong when a roman soldier came and pierced his side and killed jesus christ so he didn't rise again the disciples took the body and hid it somewhere and said jesus rose again what about the visions they just had hallucinations and they had visions that's all nothing happened what about the women who went to the tomb and saw the tomb empty oh they went to the wrong tomb see he said the whole thing as a hoax and finally said the whole christianity should crumble down now the great thing about of christian faith is that we have a solid proof you can say the empty tomb or the bible that we have and all the appearances then the existence of church all over this world and more than that your life the life of the christians that prove that jesus really rose again in acts chapter 2 itself st paul says this jesus whom you killed god raised him and we are the witnesses dear brothers and sisters in christ for the resurrection even though you can point out to some material things your life should be the proof for the resurrection of lord and savior jesus christ now i am going to share with you a few thoughts from the life of st thomas who came down to chennai and died here now today the passage talks about how st thomas proclaimed jesus christ as the lord not just lord he said god now let me uh, share with you a few bible passages that talk about st thomas we all know that he was named as the uh, doubting thomas and many people paint him in a negative way but i would like to see him in a positive way because basically because jesus took all his activities or what he said in a positive way and helped him to overcome his own personal weaknesses let's take the first reference in john chapter 11 verse 16 this is what we read so thomas called the twin said to his fellow disciples let's also go that we may die with him many people think the statement or the words of st thomas in a negative way while jesus was talking about going and dying and rising on the third day why he was talking about death Jesus was talking about life now we must understand why he said that in the context of what Jesus' brothers and other disciples had said the other disciples said no no don't go to jerusalem they are planning to kill you they were afraid they would that they would not only kill jesus that they will kill them also so they were afraid they were asking jesus christ not to go jerus not to go to jerusalem whereas the brothers they encouraged him to go you prove yourself there you are claiming that you are a messiah and we don't believe in you 
At the most, what you can do, you go and say in Jerusalem and prove yourself there. If they kill you, okay, you die. Now, in this context, St. Thomas says, no, Jesus has decided to go there even though he knew that death he has to face there. And Thomas said, let's go and die with Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, <clears throat> here I see St. Thomas's positive love towards Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15, we read Jesus saying, the best love that you can see in this world is a friend giving his life for his own friend. Now here we see St. Thomas ready to die along with Jesus Christ. That shows his commitment. So the first thing that we learn from the life of St. Thomas is that our commitment to Jesus Christ. Are you willing to sacrifice things for Jesus, Jesus Christ? Are you willing to take up the cross that is there in your life as you lead your Christian life? Here I would like to place before you John chapter 15, verse 15, where, uh, as I shared, Jesus talks about sacrificing life for others. Of course, Luke chapter 9 clearly says, take up your cross and follow me daily. The second thing that I would like to share with, with regard to the life of St. Thomas is that he was a disciple who wanted to learn more. The second reference about him that we see in John chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, where we come to know about this question. When Jesus said, I am going to my father, immediately Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Then Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth and the life. Now, from this I learned that there's no harm in asking questions with regard to the Bible verses. Many a time, we put our young people down whenever they ask some question. Even children ask questions. Don't put them down when they ask questions with regard to the biblical verses. All that they need an explanation. See, you can explain all the Bible verses. All that you have to do is compare some of the Bible verses. Don't just pick up one verse and explain the whole thing. Many people do the wrong thing. Even the pastors do the same thing. They pick up one or the other verse and cook up a theory. With regard to baptism or with regard to the speaking in tongues and so many other things. Just pick few verses and cook up a theory. No, you have to study the whole Bible. Read other verses, compare them. Now, the question of St. Thomas led Jesus Christ to say the golden words, I am the way, the truth and the life. So you can, as you meditate on the Bible verse, you can ask questions. You must have the thirst to know more about God, more about His ways. And God wants that. If you read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3, there we read God lamenting. Even the donkey knows his master's place. Even the ox knows his manger. My people do not know me. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord wants you to know him. Personally know him. In your day-to-day -day life, he wants you to know him. Know him who he is and what he can do to you. Yes, that's really true. See, whenever, when we go uh, into different uh, phases of life and when we face different situations, God allows us in those situations to go in and experience Him. 
in all our difficulties in all our struggles that's the great thing about christian life christian life is not trouble free life we face troubles we face sickness but in the midst of all these situation you will know who your god is how he can act in your life that's the great thing so there is no harm in asking questions with regard to the bible you will get an answer when you study the bible the next thing that i would like to share with you with regard to st thomas is that he is a disciple who wanted to be certain of things of course this is where people say he is a doubting thomas and paint him in a negative way anyway the way he put it looks like he had a doubt <clears throat> gideon had a doubt if you read judge judges chapter 6 there we see gideon doubting what god had told him god told him that you will win the war you will conquer the enemy but he had a doubt because the situation was like that he was the last in the family and he was not a warrior so how can i conquer was a big question to him then god gave him a sign when thomas asked us i unless i touch him unless i touch his hands and his side i will not believe now here we see amazing thing that jesus appeared as if he has come to give assurance to st thomas the very next sunday he appeared to the disciples after the greetings he immediately called st thomas and told the exact words that he told to the disciples now jesus asked him to come and touch his hand and touch his sides the amazing thing is st thomas did not go and touch his hand or his side even though the picture in st uh, thomas uh, santom cathedral <coughs> depicts st thomas putting his finger on the side in inside the wound that's a wrong picture <clears throat> even if you go to the cathedral you will see that at the basement that's a wrong picture bible doesn't say he went and touched touched the wound of jesus because when jesus uttered the exact words he told in his accents absence he knew very well it was jesus christ he didn't have any doubt dear brothers and sisters in christ sometimes even have doubts abraham doubted gideon doubted st thomas doubted the great thing the good news about our dear god is that he comes down to our level and helps us it helps us let me share with you a true story that i read in a book on various testimonies once a person was walking down <clears throat> the princess street in edinburgh london as he was going he was attracted by a painting uh, a shop that sold paintings and he stopped and looked at the different pictures or the paintings in the sh- displayed in the showcase as he was looking at those pictures his eyes fell on one painting that was at the center of the whole showcase that was the painting of the crucifixion as you are looking on at the painting his whole life came to his mind he remembered how his mother taught him biblical stories 
how his ma his mother was very particular in sending him to the sunday school and helped him to learn many bible verses and how in his young days he went away from faith stopped going to the church and started leading a different way and got into many problems now as he was looking at the crucifix he felt somebody standing beside him there was a little rugged boy with torn clothes dirty and he started speaking that is jesus christ sir on the cross he was a good man he performed many miracles he helped people he went about doing good to other people always now the leaders of his time crucified him lord look at so look at the crown of thorns now look at the foot of the cross that lady is his mother crying there and that is another disciple john as he was describing the painting as if he was giving a commentary the person's heart really shaken the lump started rising in his throat tears started coming from his eyes then he said lord forgive me for forgetting what you have done on the cross for me then he wanted to walk away so that the little boy would not see his tears so he simply walked away went fast at the turning he took his kerchief from his coat and started wiping his tears and as he was wiping his tears he felt somebody pulling his coat and her turn the same boy and he said sir i forgot to tell you one thing sir even though they crucified him and he died he rose again on the third day and he looked at his face and saw the tears and said don't cry sir don't cry he rose again on the third day dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus gives us assurance that he died and rose again and still he lives with us that's why we always saying he lives he lives christ jesus lives today okay the lord wants us to lead us to certainty of our faith the next one that i would like to share with you is that it was saint thomas who boldly said that jesus is god till that time all the disciples thought he was just a prophet a man a great man even though jesus revealed himself as god by calming the sea calming the wind but they didn't realize it even though we see saint peter confessing that you are the son of god no they haven't fully understood what they were saying about jesus christ for the first time it was saint thomas who proclaimed jesus is god now we know fully well that john's gospel time and again reiterates that jesus is god even though we cannot fully understand trinity we simply accept it because many verses confirm that jesus is god and the first it was saint thomas who said that jesus is god the last one that i would like to share with you is this <clears throat> he is a disciple who continued christian fellowship that is the last place that we see him in john chapter 21 verse 2 where we read the disciples went away to galilee and gone back fishing again and there we see <coughs> st thomas st thomas called the twin didymus and other disciples after seeing the risen lord 
they continue to have this christian faith now you if you look at the names you will see only some of the disciples are there others have gone to different places but only these people they got stick together because jesus said i will meet you there in galilee so here i learned the message from st thomas datus we should also give importance to christian fellowship time and again i would say in the area of fellowship we should give importance to area fellowship you know why that was the first church when the early christians were mostly the jewish people they worshiped in jerusalem temple but as christians they met at homes in fact they had the holy communion service at home they didn't have any church they gave importance to fellowship time and again we see how the early church gave importance to family prayer family fellowship the group fellowship for example in acts chapter 1 verse 14 where we see where there we see how the early disciples got together had oneness of mind in acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47 there we see the church got together they devoted themselves that's what the real phrase they devoted themselves they were very particular in learning from the apostles and having communion service having fellowship and sharing they remained in prayer they shared things with other people so they gave importance to the small church the family and the other members in the congregation in the same way we are called to give importance to christian fellowship to dear brothers and sisters in christ now i would like to share with you what we have decided in the lcc that is <clears throat> now we have three fellowships one in uh, ananagar another one here in uh, poswakam and then uh, in chetpet egmore and chetpet <clears throat> now our congregation is spread all over chennai many people were unable to participate in this if we have only these three area fellowships now we wanted to have five more fellowships making it totally eight on every friday we will meet so that in eight areas we will meet and have a wonderful time of fellowship and studying the word of god now uh, uh, dear brother <coughs> david charles has come up with the uh, material on st marks and i'll show it uh, i'll just keep it there we got a nice wonderful material from the our daily bread and sam helped us in getting those books and we are going to study the bible and have a time of fellowship and share testimony in different areas now why i am sharing this is that because st thomas gave importance to fellowship christian fellowship that's where our st- faith is strengthened we can pray for each other in a meaningful way you can pray for particular things of particular family there is okay we have the intercessory prayer that's more general more general but only when we meet in areas you can pray for each other you can pray for particular things that will definitely strengthen our christian fellowship so i encourage you to participate in the area fellowship and be benefited by it and strengthen other people's life i always say when you sing it not only strengthens your faith it strengthens the faith of the other people who are standing and hearing your singing you should always remember that now we should thank god for sending st thomas to chennai and i would like to conclude with uh, an important thing that i read in a beautiful book uh, published by the roman catholics that is 
in uh, <clears throat> 1523 they came to know that st thomas lived in that particular area called santom and they had a small church now they built the small church not because they had the church from the beginning they knew that st thomas came here he went to parthia china and india and came to south india and worked in kerala and finally came to chennai and uh, he died here <clears throat> but the proof came as they were renovating the old church on july it was on a saturday as they were digging they found a tomb and inside the tomb they found a skeleton and there was a small pot where they found some sand all you know, solidly uh, with uh, all stuck together because it was bloody okay so there was blood and sand and then they saw a spear on the side of the skeleton when they took the bricks and researched they found it was from the first century that was confirmed and then they knew that it was the skeleton of st thomas now when the roman catholic church heard about it they asked him to send the whole skeleton to rome and now it is in edessa and after that they when the church in chennai asked them to send a small bone they sent a small bone now that is kept in santom cathedral what i am trying to say is that from the local people they came to know just this there is a tomb of the holy people holy person maintained by muslims you know how muslims venerate uh, the ancestors you know about darga so it was the muslims who were protecting that tomb and the local people also said whenever their own people die when they take the body in that area they always kept the body of the their loved ones in front of the tomb place it down and then take it it seems that was the practice of the fisherman community they didn't know why they didn't know why they are doing it they simply did it and the muslims also protected that area thinking uh, without knowing that it was st thomas some person some person, some saint now it happened that as they dug the place they found the tomb of st thomas that confirms to the whole world that jesus sent one of his disciples to chennai so that he could die here and bear witness to the people in chennai and india of course when you think of the two places where he served and where he, which he loved it's amazing one he worked among the fishermen community and he died in the sea shore sea shore is an important place for the disciples the sea of galilee and the next one the mount st thomas mount that reminded him of calvary the mount where jesus died dear brothers and sisters in christ what i am trying to share with you is that we should give importance to st thomas too because he is the one who affirms the fact that jesus loves indians and jesus died for indians and he wants you and me to be with him forever and ever let's keep a moment of silence thanking god for the messages that we have received 
through the life of St. Thomas, he was a disciple who was ready to die with Jesus. Are you ready to sacrifice things for Jesus? Suffer for Jesus Christ? Ready to die for Jesus Christ? St. Thomas was a disciple who wanted to learn more. You have, do you have the thirst to know more and more messages from the Bible? Thirst to read the Bible? St. Thomas was a disciple who wanted to be certain of things. When children or young people ask questions, don't put them down. Ask God to give you wisdom to explain the Bible verses. Even when you have doubt, don't worry. God comes to our level and helps us to overcome our doubts. St. Thomas was a disciple who first acknowledged that Jesus is God. And he was a person who was very particular about Christian fellowship. Loving God, we thank you for this, these messages that we learned through St. Thomas. Help us, Lord, to follow his footsteps and give all glory to you. Thank you for sending him to Chennai. Help us to glorify your holy name by continuing the ministry that you have started through St. Thomas in South India and particularly in Chennai. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.